Hello guys, in this lecture we are going to learn the basic functioning of passenger lifts and how to calculate and apply loads onto machine room and lift shaft. By lifting mechanism, the lift are of two types. One is hydraulic lift in which a hydraulic piston lifts the entire lift cabin up and down with the help of hydraulic fluid. Generally, these types of lifts are used to lift heavy items like a car parking lift or heavy duty service lifts. The speed of these lifts are quite limited to 0.5 meter per second because these pistons have to lift the entire weight of lift cabin up and down, requiring much more power so these are not the ideal lift to carry the passengers quickly in high rise buildings. So for passenger lifts, we use traction lift where we have a counterweight which will be balancing the lift cabin load so that the motor at the top only have to apply the difference of loads in order to move the lift cabin up and down as compared to the hydraulic lift where full load of lift cabin has to be applied. Its speed varies from mid-rise building 1.5 meter per second to 10 meter per second for skyscrapers like Burj Khalifa. Well-known companies that provide lift installation are Chandelier and Cone. You can find local companies in your area that provide lift parts installation at a cheaper price. If we provide a traction lift for four-story building, then it will roughly cost around 7 to 8 lakh and for a building having G plus 13 story, it will roughly cost around 13 to 14 lakh. Before we move on towards detailed calculation of loads, you need to understand different parts of a lift and how it functions. For this purpose, we have a detailed lift installation video from Z Elevation Company. This video will give you a clear idea about different parts of a lift and its installation. Watch this. With installation of the machine bays on top of the guide rails. Also, install the hitch plate. Now the counterweight frame. Belts after checking for the alignment of machine pulley and pallets on the car frame. Now install the safety link and safety blocks in position. The traction lift comes with a variety of weight carrying capacity in terms of number of people starting from 6 person then 8 then 10 then 13 15 and so on the minimum inner pit size for 6 person lift should be 1600 by 1600 mm for 10 people it is around 1800 by 1800 mm the larger size pit lift like 13 people or more are called stretcher or service lifts which helps to carry large item to different floors of building keep in mind that a combination of normal 6 to 10 people passenger lift and a long stretcher lift is necessary in any residential or commercial building the same combination is provided in our building plan as well. Try to provide 6 person lift only in small building up to G plus 3 as there is not much of a difference in price of these lifts as compared to 8 person lift as well as in their pit size. Try to provide minimum 8 person lift wherever possible as it will cost only 25 to 35,000 more than the 6 person lift. So an 8 person lift is provided for day to day use and a large length stretcher lift is also provided for heavy item lifting or carrying an unhealthy person on a stretcher as well. If you constructed a large size lift pit and want to fit a smaller size lift, you can do that as well to a certain limit. The lift shaft size is provided by manufacturers for every lift model. Like the one you can see for Sandlier where the lift shaft size is mentioned for a 6 person lift. The annotation is also mentioned in clear lift diagram. 
Here you can see the bottom pit minimum size and top minimum clearance is also mentioned. These are lift roomless elevators. Nowadays these are installed in majority of new good building projects but the new technology is a little bit expensive from the old one. So as per our client need we have to provide lift room type of elevator design. Once we have the basic knowledge of lift type, its parts and installation, we now can move on towards lift load calculation on our lift shaft slab. As lift is a moving part of an structure, it will apply dynamic forces or additional forces due to its motion on the slab of machine room. Now let's consider the rest and motion both free body diagram for the lift. The one which will generate the highest force on the slab will be selected for design purpose because we consider the worst loading case for design purpose. When the lift will be in the rest position, according to free body diagram, the upward force will be balancing the weight of the lift cabin and counter weight, which will be F equal to M total into G. Now for the lift moving upward, the free body diagram will be force net equal to M total into A, as the lift will now be accelerating upward with the acceleration A. As per free body diagram, the F net will be F minus M total into G, which will be equal to M total into A. Rearranging it will look like F equal to m total into g plus a so it is clear that a lift moving upward will exert more force on the slab than the lift at rest from general sense it is quite obvious as the motor has to lift the cabin against the gravity loads so it was necessary to consider the lift forces when it is in the motion now the forces for the lift moving downwards will come out to be f equal to m total into g minus a as per the free body diagram this is the same reason why people feel little light when traveling downwards as they are moving in the direction of gravity which may makes them feel light. From these results it is clear that lift moving upwards will create the maximum load on the slab and the lift going downwards will generate the least load until brakes are applied. Consider the deacceleration acceleration rates of lift to be equal. So we will be considering this upward motion equation for all the load calculation. Open the lift load calculation sheet. You can find this sheet in your download folder. Here you can see you have to enter the value in the yellow box only. So for a 6 person lift the weight of a lift cabin is around 